Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be building our budget NAS and Plex setup with hardware decoding. So let's get started. So I want to thank Micro Center for sponsoring this build. They're the ones that actually provided the hard drives, motherboard, CPU, RAM, and everything. Now for the case and the graphic card, I ended up purchasing myself. Now I did go to the Micro Center store, even though you can actually purchase this stuff online or actually reserve it online and pick it up at the store. I usually like to go because of the build your own section. I like to go there and see if I'm missing anything or if I need to pick up more when I'm there. And most of the time when they have bundles going on, I would actually ask a rep because sometimes I don't remember to check or maybe there's a new deal that that's happening that I've completely missed. Just like this piece of RAM over here. Now, this I got as a really, really good deal. So I was glad I did that. Now, everything that we are talking about in this video will be linked down in the description below. So I would also like to mention that me and my friend started the gaming channel and we are up to episode four of our Space Engineers Voyage. So if you guys are interested after this video, maybe you wanna check that out. Now, I love budget builds. Budget builds is actually a part where I could actually start firing up my brain cells to think, what can I sacrifice to make something better? or what what can I do to offset that? I love doing budget builds versus like, I don't have 5K to spend, but if I did, there's not much thinking. You just buy the most expensive thing and it should work. But I love how budget builds are set up. And you're gonna see more of that in the future in this channel. Now to start off, let's talk about the build a little with the MVP of this whole thing, which is the graphic card. Now I picked this graphic card up from eBay for $75. This is an Nvidia Quattro P400. And this is actually gonna do most of our legwork for the hardware transcoding. Now it's not the best card, there's other cards that a lot of people recommend, which is the P2000 or the P1000. But in this sense, for $75, it makes more sense because the P2000 is $500 or $400 card. So yeah, I mean, that alone is like 90% of the cost of this build. So why did I choose this card? The value. I mean, it could do 4K transcoding. Uh, it's got two gigs of RAM on this, so I could get up to a couple of concurrent streams at one time. Let me show you guys why it's so important. Now this is a temporary uh, setup that I have going on just to show you guys what I am talking about as far as the GPU decoding or transcoding. This is the Uru Bolt with the Ryzen 1605 with the P400 attached on top. And right now I have the CPU and all that stuff graphed up right over here. Now I am actually gonna play a 4K stream from here and have it transcode down to um, 720. So let me play the 4K 8-bit right here and start from the beginning. And as soon as I hit that, you're gonna see the CPU is gonna be pinned up at 100. And that's just trying to, you know, get the transcoding going. And you can see like the line is buffering. And it works, but you know, you're really pushing the CPU just for one stream for something like this. Now, if I was to stop this, right? It's got some time going. I'm gonna stop this stream and flip my settings over to use hardware transcoding, save the changes, come back over to my stream again and play version 4K and start from the beginning. You're gonna see now my GPU is actually taking most of the hit, which is the P400. CPU is using whatever it's supposed to be using to trans form or transport the media but really the GPU is the one that's actually doing all the work and you can see it's also transcoding you're getting that little bar down here and everything transcodes as it is now this is a 4k to 720 stream and you can see it's only using about half a gigabyte of RAM 0.5 from the two so this means that this graphic card can actually support up to four streams without having much of an issue so if you unlock it with the patch drivers, you could definitely do that. Now, I'm going to stop this stream and show you guys if I was to actually encode this from a 1080 media. It is very, very impressive, like a 1080 3.5. And let me start from the beginning. So with a 1080, I'm barely using 200 megabytes in the RAM or I'm about using 200 megabytes in the GPU RAM. And I'm using a lot less you know it's less intense and i get the streams so much quicker look if i was to move this forward right skim look at that bar grow so fast you see that the transcoding is like really fast with this type of graphic card on the 1080 but it's also able to do 4k so 
yeah, that's why I use this type of setup. Now, if you're doing this wirelessly and you want to direct cast 4K over to like a laptop like this, it's not even going to load or buffer because the media is too strong. So yeah, definitely if you're going to do 4K downloading like your medias and stuff like that and you want to play on a mobile device like a laptop or even your cell phone, you're going to need to transcode it no matter what. So now that you know why this is pretty important, uh, let's get back to the rest of the build. Now to start off, we have this motherboard, which is the Gigabit B450 Aurora Wi-Fi Pro or Pro Wi-Fi. Now I do recommend this one because it actually have the M.2 slot on the top of the board compared to the other ones I looked at, which is on the bottom of the board. And why is that important? It's because if you don't decide to use M.2, you could always get one of these slots to expand your SATA connections. Now this has two, but I've seen ones that have four. And you could use this and add four more storage if you're not planning to use this case. So this is definitely recommended if you're going to do that. Now to pair this up, I went for a Ryzen 3. Now this is a pretty good CPU for what we're going to do because we're pairing this up with the graphic card. So this doesn't have to do a lot of the heavy lifting. The graphic card will pick up all the slack. And it has a built-in graphic card. So 100% of this GPU usage will be on the actual transcoding while we could just use this as a regular display. Now to marry that up again, I've got the eight gigs of RAM, 3200 megahertz speed. This was 4299, which is really good price for this. And 3200 megahertz speed. Now, if you've seen my video where I compare the speeds with this same CPU, you can see how much of a difference it is from you know 2160, 2133 to you know other speeds that you paired up. Now. On top of that, I also got a 256 gigabyte inland M.2, and that's gonna help with the thumbnail generation and also the pre-caching of the transcodes and everything, because I'm not gonna be sticking that into the RAM due to the fact that I only got eight gigs. The M.2 is very important at this point. Now, I got four Western Digital two terabyte Reds. Now, I do recommend using like storage drive or NAS drives like Reds, or you know from other companies their network storage drives because they're made to last a lot longer now there was other hard drives there with more like four terabytes at the same price but i'd rather get this because i know this is going to last a lot longer last but not least we have the case this case actually took me a while to find this is a chen bro i'll put the model number right here but this has a four bay hot swappable drive in front this has also a lock in the front so you can lock this up lights usb everything's all locked up and it's like more secure and inside it fits an ITX motherboard with a low profile slot for a graphic card or if you are planning to use a SATA card, you could fit that there as well. Then the only downside to this is that you see how the power supply is actually doesn't have that much clearance from the board. You're kind of stuck with using either a low profile fan or something like this that comes with a smaller cooler, which is fine in our case because we've got that graphic card. Now. One good thing about this is this case is at $109, but it also included the PSU. And I know you're gonna say, buy your own PSU. I get that, but in a budget build, I mean, if it came with it, it's gonna be great. I mean, you definitely, I definitely recommend upgrading this PSU because it only has two four pin Molexes, one ATX motherboard supply and one CPU supply. So if, even if you wanted to use more hard drives, you're gonna need to upgrade the power supply. Otherwise, that's it, that's the build. So let's start building. All right, so here we have it. It's finished, everything's put together, but I did have a hard time doing cable management. As you can see, like there's no cable management anywhere for this. So I had to kind of like tuck everything aside, find uh, special cables to angle everything, zip tie this part so I could kind of hold up the fan. Um, everything's kind of loosely based, but I'm a little bit proud of this part. Check out in the back. So this, I managed to run the motherboard cable through the back Underneath there was a little channel here and into the slot. I don't like these cables and I do really want to change this power supply. But for now, this is what I got. Uh, the motherboard CPU power also 
runs up, comes back down, and then it gets connected over here. And that's about it. This is uh, loose because this is actually for the power uh, button and uh, all that other stuff, reset button. But good thing this is enclosed and you won't really be able to see anything, so it's as the best as I can get it. Now, there's a lot of other pins up here, which I don't know what they are for because there's no instructions for this case. There's pins over there. This looks like a USB header pin. There's fan connector pins all the way at the end, and those are the two Molexes for this cage. So uh, I'm going to look this up to see if I do need to put anything there, but otherwise, it's, it's complete. I am going to also 3D print a new low-profile bracket because I bought this used. It didn't come with a low-profile bracket, but I found that I could print it out, 3D print one. So I'm going to do that probably a little bit later. Um, yeah, this is enclosed, so the heat will come out. This, the heat that's coming out from here will not go back into the case, which I thought it was pretty cool. I'm pretty much all set with the computer and as you can see it's actually really really quiet I'm standing right next to it and you can't barely hear it the fans are quiet the power supply is quiet which I was nervous for and also the CPU fan that comes with this case I mean the case fan that comes with this case is actually pretty quiet and it looks pretty cool like this you could see the light bleeding through for the hard drives and I don't know if you could see it through here but there's actually lights on the bottom from the motherboard it's got like a LED strip on the bottom yeah you see that it looks pretty cool how it shines through and I could change the colors and stuff. I might keep it or I could turn it off. Uh, as of right now, I'm actually installing Debian and that might be the main route that I'm going to be going and setting up everything manually, which is the share, Plex, my own Grafana dashboard. I want to do something like this and it looks pretty cool using Grafana. And yeah, I might just do it manually and that allows me for more freedom and I could do whatever I want. Um, or there's other options like FreeNAS, but FreeNAS runs ZFS, and since this is not a server-grade motherboard and I don't have ECC RAM, it's actually very dangerous because you could corrupt your data like that. Uh, then you have Unraid, but this is a budget setup, and I don't know if I want to pay $60 to install Unraid for this. Not really sure. I'm on the fence on that because Unraid supports different part uh, different size hard drives. So if you guys are just slapping hard drives in there, like two terabytes, then a four terabyte, then a one terabyte. Unraid has that option to allow you to still raid those different sizes. Uh, then we have, you know, like I said, regular Debian and also OMV. Um, I like OMV, and OMV is a full dashboard that allows you to add users and stuff like that. I'm really still on the fence about what I'm going to choose, but I am going to start with Debian and manually install everything and see how that goes. Uh, it's going to be a part two of this video of this entire setup as far as the operating system, the software I'm going to use, etc., etc. So be sure to tune in for that. Now, if you guys have any operating systems that you guys use for a NAS setup, hit it down in the comments below because I might want to check those out and that might be a liable option for me to switch over to. So that's it from me, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this build, hit it up in the comments below and I will have all the links to everything I talked about down in the description as well. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, Heck till it hurts.